I can't. Not again. I'm not no! strong enough. Yep. They made another one of these. Damn it. I guess I gotta see this one to the grave. Ooh, woo. No, none of that. None of that. All right, recap time. So for those who don't know, I did a review for a movie called Sheep and Wolves back in October of 2018. Uh, needless to say, it was quite the roller coaster, and I definitely had some thoughts about it. Blech. Blech. So here's a quick synopsis of what happened in the first movie. Basically, you have this wolf named Gray. He's cocky, and he wants to be the new leader of his wolf village. He then gets turned into a ram, becomes friend with a bunch of sheep, learns that violence isn't the way, then fights a bunch of wolves, and then convinces his tribe that they all should be friends. That's the movie. Blech. Characters range from gray, to villain, to uh, uh, stupid sheep, to stupider sheep, to stupidest sheep, to fur bait, to <laughs> big time fur bait. Oh, what a sweet surprise. What, this? <laughs> Wait till tonight. Now that'll be a surprise. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought this was the bathroom. Oh, good lord! My thoughts about the first movie were, like, divided down the middle. It was a film that was good, but not good enough. One that had competent people working on it, but it lacked focus, and the universe it takes place in, I did not really care for. You have these anthro characters who have villages, who can build stuff, and yet the wolves want to eat them? Eh, I, I didn't like it. If you're gonna have a story about animals eating each other, then maybe you shouldn't go anthro with it. Like Zootopia did a good job with this. You have the animals become savage, so they kind of lose what made them human in a way. Oh, the tiger isn't really being normal, he's actually like an animal now. Versus, hey, I'm a wolf anthro character, I think I'm human, just kidding, I'm running on all fours now, just kidding, I'm walking now with my fist bared, what the hell is this movie's universe? It doesn't make sense. On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. So yeah, that, that's my main take from the first movie. It was good, it was bad, it was both. And it's so interesting because you've got these visuals that look pretty damn good. Those are good fur effects. Legit. I'm impressed. Too bad the characters it's attached to suck. That's weird. So another unique thing about this movie is that it's Russian, and it was made by a studio called Wizard Animation. Real talk, this studio has potential. It just seems misguided, and it needs better stories and writers. That seems to be the case for most of the films that they make. Yeah, I hope you like your Frozen ripoff. The Snow Queen! You saw the advertisement too? Huh? The first Sheep and Wolves movie has like, eh, low ratings. Not like terrible, but not very good. Also, it didn't do well at the box office. It cost $3.4 million to make, and it only made $4.1 million back. That's not good. And yet, here we are, with a sequel. I honestly thought that wouldn't happen. Why won't you die? I was following this movie. I wanted to see if it would actually happen or not. Because last I heard, it was stuck in production hell. But I guess I'm in actual hell now. Yay! Lucky me! I love your good appetite so much. It's an error of nature. All right, let's talk about the movie. Like I said, the last film was about our main character, Grey and how he was turned into a ram and had to convince his tribe of wolves to peacefully live alongside the sheep. Heck, we even get a cute 2D animation recap. That was a pleasant surprise. And once again became a wolf. He brought the community peace. But what's the new story about? What's going on this time around? Well, in the first movie, it was about wolves letting go of their violent ways and becoming friends with the sheep. Here in the sequel, it's about wolves letting go of their violent ways and becoming friends with the sheep. Ah, oh, f*** me. It's the same story again. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. The wolves are bigger this time, so it's completely different. Completely different. My bad. Also, this movie has one of the fastest intros I've ever seen. It's like, bam, right in your face. 
The story is basically about a bunch of new wolves, cleverly called the Dark Wolves, and how they learn about the village where the other wolves live alongside the sheep. The main villain, whose name I forget, I think it's like Grunk or, or, or Grog. Gunk. Whatever. He finds Grey and tells him that this is wrong. That wolves and sheep living peacefully? <laughs> That's absurd. And it goes against the natural order. He then says he's going to attack the village. Soonish. Gather up everyone! We're gonna attack now! Legit, this is one of the most frustrating parts of the movie. The villain wolf is like, I'm gonna get you guys, but we don't know when. Like, he sets up camp across the way from the village and just sits there. So there really isn't much of a timetable to work with. He's just standing there. Menacingly! So the village panics. They try a variety of solutions, and all of them fail. A, a good chunk of the movie is just this, and it's painfully slow. At the end, the Dark Wolves attack. The villagers use some kind of magic potion that's supposed to make them strong, but instead, it turns them into pigs. They then turn back to their normal selves, and then the Dark Wolves are like, hmm, maybe we're being too mean, and we probably shouldn't be eating sentient creatures, because that's cannibalism in a way. And then everybody becomes friends. That's the movie. Just like before, it's basically the same plot. Well, that was the video tip, boys. What do you have to say for yourselves? Let's just hop right into my five point summary because there's a lot to break down here. First, unfortunately, is the story. This is what the movie failed at the most. And it's one of the worst things you could possibly fail at. If you don't have a good story, you won't have a good movie. No. So yeah, the plot. Talk about lazy. It was just a rehash of the last movie. And honest to God, I was actually invested in the first 10 minutes of the film. It looked promising. Oh wow, there's a, a, a meaner village of wolves. Kind of repetitive, but okay, I'll follow this. Oh okay, Grey's trying to become a better leader and taking on responsibilities of leading the tribe. Okay, that could be a good arc. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this movie might be good. Oh wait, it's not. It sucks. Hey, don't. Don't go there. The pacing is a huge issue in this movie. The, the, the first 10 minutes of the film actually looked promising, but then everything just dropped off. Any tension that was built was lost. The village has to defend itself. Okay, uh, what now? Oh, we'll just build some crappy fortress walls and fail twice. Uh, okay. What about the villains? Oh, they'll just stand around across a field and do nothing. Oh, uh, wow, that's boring. But he said it clashes with my brown fur. It does. You don't say. So I tells him brown goes with everything. <laughs> the villain was kind of cool at first. He looked a hell of a lot better than the first villain, and he actually came across as imposing. But then he just became a comic gag. You know, just jokes and poking fun at him. Nothing wrong with doing that, but it was a complete change of direction of what his character was introduced as. I'm the evil big wolf and I'm to be feared. Oh, just kidding. I'm a big old goofbag and I'm pretty pathetic. <laughs> and speaking of character development, uh, the villagers were no better. They were so incompetent with what they were doing. Yes, I get it. I know that Master Hand was sabotaging the village, but who cares? I'm pretty sure the village would have sabotaged themselves. They're just that dumb. Is this some kind of joke? And this is probably the biggest glaring issue I have with the movie. It's called Sheep and Wolves 2, The Pig Deal. Where are the pigs? Oh, okay, 25 minutes in, we see a pig for like five seconds and then nothing. Nothing at all until the end of the movie. It's, I, I, I don't get it. I, I, the, the way they present this movie's title, it makes you think that the pigs would be a big part of it, but it seems more like an afterthought. I guess you can say it was ham-fisted. How could you? Overall, 
The story is boring, repetitive, and it has big pacing issues. The only character that has any real change is Grey, and how he's wondering if he's a good enough leader for the village. It's kind of reminiscent of Kung Fu Panda, and how Poe thinks that he's unworthy of being the Dragon Warrior. And I'm not the Dragon Warrior. Then why didn't you quit? I can't be a leader. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Everybody else sucks, though, and the new characters they introduce are either repetitive or pointless. New Fox Girl? Mm, she doesn't do anything. New Villain Minions? Oh, you mean the skinny one and the fat one? Just like the last movie? How about the Alligator Girl that turns into a sheep? Oh, that's different. This could be promising. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, he wants to fuck her. Got it. So does he. God, a lot of scalies in this movie. Eve. And I'll say it one more time. I do not understand this universe. They're animals, but they're not animals. The wolves want to eat the sheep. The same sheep who have advanced technology, like f***ing tanks. Oh, and they also know what guns are, as you can plainly see in the background here. This technology discrepancy is just too much for me to ignore. And it ruins the movie for me, just like the last one. And there's some irony to this, because the villain's like, Sheep and wolves shouldn't live together, because it disrupts the natural order of nature. My dude, does any of this look natural to you? It's an error of nature. Next, there's the voice acting. Honestly, it was fine. Now, there were some voice actors in the first film that weren't in this one, like Jim Cummings, but overall, it was solid. Nothing outstanding, but solid. Gotta love the villain's growly voice, though. I, I watched this movie with my friends, and we were all like, is that Idris Elba? But it doesn't matter. You're all filthy pigs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the dialogue. Like I said, there's some pacing issues with this movie, and whenever that happens, the dialogue tends to suffer with it. Long-winded jokes and gags that take forever and are a pain to watch. Who's in charge of defense again? It's a you. Me? No, a you. I'm in charge of defense? No, Carrie is. Carrie what? Carrie the you. Who's carrying me? What? I'm confused. I thought you were skinny. Hey, I mean, I could stand again a few, but oh, you mean... Yeah, you. This is the worst. After that, there's the editing. Just like the voice acting, it was fine. Heck, I'd even say it was pretty good. The audio balancing was solid. And there's some decent music in this film. But there was this weird moment where it would fade out and then fade back in, but then it faded right back out. It was super confusing. That's exactly what I'm talking about. See what your temper does to you! What the hell is that? And finally, there's the animation. So there are some designs in this movie for the characters that I kind of dig. I, I like the fox. I, I like how she looks. I'm not a furry. Shut up. Too bad her character was barely used at all. My dream is to become a botanist. Grey, the villain, uh, even some of the sheep, they look fine. There's a style to these characters, and it kind of works, just not in this setting. Oh, God, and this guy's back. Oh, dude, you, you look rough. You got it. Blah. The animators who worked on this movie did a good job with the fur and the hair and the wool. Look at Bianca. Her hair looks amazing. Like, that is legitimately good. It's almost as if somebody went all out on her. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, 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 she's a lady. Something that caught me off guard were how many 2D animated short sequences were in this film. We got one with the intro, but there were, I think, like three or four more throughout the film. And this is crazy, because I, I thought I would never say this about a movie. There's too many sequences. I, I like it as the intro recap, but then it kind of seems out of place after a while. And there's like one block during the film where it happens, I think like twice back to back. And it's jarring. It's just, it's jarring to me. As far as the movement of the characters go, it looks fine to me. 
The physics were a bit off at times, where, like, the weight behind the character's fist when they fight seemed kind of lofty and, and light. But overall, it seemed like it was fine. And I do appreciate that there's some detail here. There was a part where Gray's eyes, like, widen, and that was cool. Th they didn't have to do that. But then there are other moments where they cut corners. A big part of that is the lip sync. Again, this movie is Russian. So for the English dub, they tried to fix the lip sync so it actually matches up with what was being said. This kind of worked out for the first 10 minutes of the film, but just like everything else, it just dropped off. Maybe it was too demanding and they needed to hurry things along for production, but my God, does it show. Exactly, that's what the card said. As far as the world building, assets, and textures go, they look fine. Not perfect, but fine. For example, there's a lot of copy and paste in this movie when it came to the background characters, and it gets painfully obvious. There are shots where it's like, wow, there's seven of you, good lord. But then there are other moments where you see the animators kick it up a notch. It's like a teeter-totter. Good, bad, good, bad. And it's frustrating too because there is actual talent and potential here. This studio can do it. It can make good stuff. But when you have bad characters and a lackluster story, well, it doesn't matter how nice the visuals are. Everything else comes crumbling down. If only you had listened. So how would I improve the movie? Well, I'd choose a plot that isn't so repetitive. Make it to where the Dark Wolves are kind of like the Huns from Mulan, where they're like, we're on our way, and you better be ready, because when we show up, we're going to kick your butts. And then the village has to train and work together, where the sheep and the wolves aren't getting along, but then they finally click and become a team. That way it would solidify what was established in the last movie. But no, just a rinse and repeat. Also, change the dynamics of the universe. I, I don't like the technology. It just throws me off. There are moments where they're like, we're building a bridge or a, a gate out of wood. Oh, by the way, we also have an electric fan and goggles. It, it messes me up. Oh, how do we defend ourselves against the wolves? You look pretty capable of inventing a gun. Try that. It could have been just tribes fighting tribes. Don't even address them eating each other. That adds an extra layer that you don't really need. Tonight, we feast. Wait, what? Overall, I'm not against seeing more content from this studio. Again, they have potential, and I'm hoping that they'll surprise me in the future. But they really need to shake up their command and get some new blood in there. Better ideas and writers and concepts to work with. As of right now, they're aiming for that low-hanging fruit, and I think that they're too good for that. Be better. You all can do it. Be better. Trust me, I've seen my fair share of awful studios, and you guys actually have promise. But if you all make a third Sheep and Wolves movie, I, I don't know what I'll do. I feel like if it happens, my avatar will turn into a fursona. <coughs> oh, god damn it. Hey guys, it's the end of the video once more, so uh, thank you all for watching it. A big shout out to my patrons, and uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can go hit it up in the description. If you like the video, give it a like, and sub to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.